Sunday, Chris Roberts here for Fight Up TV. I'm joined by Dave Caldwell. Tremendously tough fight for your, your guy in, uh, in Liverpool in the next one. On paper, on paper, two, two big punches, two guys that like to come and, and knock the other guy out. Um, that's what you want to see, isn't it? You know, as a fan, that's what you want to see. And I've been wanting a real fight for Anthony for a while. Um, and he, he finally gets something that's going to be stood across the ring from him that isn't coming to have a go, that's actually coming expecting to win. Yeah. There's a big difference between that, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. How, how in, in his preparation, you know, psychologically, physically, you know, does he change his preparation or does he do anything different in the lead up to this? You, you know, obviously you see there's a few variables in the press conference today, you know, something that's very different to what, you know, he's probably used to previously. You know, is there anything that he has to change in terms of his preparation leading up to the fight? We, we, work, we work to improve him. I don't worry about, you know, every fight that we've had, we've not, I've not been preparing for, for the journeyman opponents that have been having all the, all the, you know, the tough fighters that he's been having that, that we know aren't going to be, yeah. aren't going to be beating him, but they're going to pose problems. I don't prepare for them. I've, it's always been about preparing him to make him the best that he can be, all his attributes, all his weaknesses, try and eradicate the weakness as much as he can, try and add things to his game as much as he can. Um, so I'll continue to do that. There are things that you look at in your opponent, like Fitzgerald, that you'll adapt to a little bit. But the bulk of your training is about making him as best as he can be. And the, you know, the best Anthony Powell, I'll go straight through Scott Fitzgerald. Is there any risk of, obviously, he's feeling very, very confident? He's come across as confident in the press conference? Right. His confidence is good. Overconfidence is bad. Overconfidence means that you can overlook the man in front of you, overlook his strengths, overlook your weaknesses. That doesn't happen. That doesn't happen in my camp. That doesn't happen with him because I don't allow it to. Um, he doesn't get out of the ring and have a good spar and then think he's ten men. I tell him exactly what he did wrong. He might have done one thing wrong, and 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 I'll pinpoint that. And it, it doesn't. What you see on the outside, you just see the confidence. You don't see the work. You don't. You don't see the reason why there's that confidence there. Um, and you don't see the groundedness that he's got where where he, he realizes that the amateur career has no bearing on, on, on this professional career but he has got that amateur experience of fighting so that gives you an inner confidence in your fighting ability but you know that you've got to add to that in a professional game which is what he's working on so confidence is fine i don't mind that and he's not showing overconfidence so i'm, I'm happy with that there's a lot of talk about obviously ted cheeseman you know down the line your potential big fight he's yeah. also got a big fight um, I know it was mentioned in the press con conference, but what's your sort of feeling on that? Talk talking don't, about fights that don't really oh, care. Really. I don't really care about Cheeseman and what he's doing, which won't best to beat Garcia. I expect him to beat Garcia, but in his interviews lately, he's talking like he's, he's he don't want to fight Fowler now. He's giving it the old, you know, he's got to do this. He's not done that. And blah blah blah. I'm, I'm ahead of him. He's talking about fighting. I think heard of people like that. He's beaten Byfield. He's not, he's not done anything to, to, to warrant talking about people like um, her, you know, your, your Charlos and people like that. Fowler's not, you know? So you, you, can't, you can't talk about beating guys that are, are at area and domestic level to then talking about the elite level. We're not talking about just good world champions, we're talking about elite fighters. So if he wants to chase them and talk about them, more power to him. We've got no control in what he wants to do. After this fight, if we beat Fitzgerald, like everything goes to plan, we'll sit down and talk to him and say, get a Cheeseman. If Cheeseman doesn't want it, we'll fight somebody else. And then we'll go back and say, we'll fight Cheeseman. Mm. If Cheeseman still don't want it, what can we do? But I think he will do, because I think a touch of realism will kick in a little bit. And I think in 2019, you will see that, as long as he beats Fitzgerald. But there's no point in talking about Fitzgerald if he doesn't go in there and perform against... Uh, there's no point in talking about Cheeseman if he doesn't go in there and perform against Fitzgerald. So there's a clear there's a clear route in terms of, you know, the next potential... Well, the next the fight after the next... Real fights now, so from the now next, on. Real fights. The next fights. two fights are, are you know, are, 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 are as good as in, providing everyone sort of, you know, comes through, gets the victories, you know, all the paperwork is done. What's your plan for Anthony going forward, sort of, beyond that? What would you see, you know, we mentioned sort you of the Jared Hurt and that. Oh, yeah, but you can't, you can't talk about those sort of guys, because there's such a big gulf between domestic and that level five. What, what time frame so, would you put on that for Anthony? I, I will take it each stage at a time. Right now, he's not won a British title, he's not won anything. 
So I can't talk about herds and child at a very different level, different, different level. So you can't you can't even gauge that because you've got to get to that. You know? So let's beat Fitzgerald. Then we can get all the achievement. Let's beat him. We beat them two. Then let's start talking about um, fringe world title fighters, world class fighters. We still can't talk about herd and, and people like that. You've then got to start talking about fringe. Because if you win, if you win the British and European, then you can start talking about like top 15 fighters in, you know, in the world. Then let's see how he does then. And then you can talk about those sort of things. You, you must be very excited by you know this talent that you've got in terms of the performances he's put in, the way he handles himself, you know, inside, outside yeah. the ring. He's got all the ingredients as need to perform at that at that level. Potentially. He has, but he's still got a lot of a lot of growing. He's nine fights in. He's still got a lot of growing to do, and he's still got a lot of lot of knowledge to to acquire and soak up, and then to be able to put it out there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Just by experience, this will be a great great fight for him. Not just in terms of, of opponent but in terms of occasion because it's alright boxing Liverpool when you're on the undercard down the undercard in little 8 rounders 6 rounders but it's going to be boxing in Liverpool where it's a major attraction for the fight you know it might be cheap, you know, possibly chief support or, or, or a joint chief support you know it's a, it's a fight where all eyes are going on it's not going to be a fight where where you've got um, 8,000 9,000 arena and for this fight you'll have about 6,000 in the bar and 3,000 that are from Liverpool and know about him and they want to be here, uh, they'll be there. This will probably, you know, it'll probably ramp. You, know, you might, you might have a few of the undercards that might be not just there to support the, the mates that are right down at the undercard from out of town. They might be the ones in the bar for this one. And this is where, where 90% of the arena is going to be in there, chuck rock. That's a new experience for him. And that's what he's going to develop and he's got to come through. You know, and, and, and I believe that he will do, but you can only believe it you don't know it until you've done it and then once you've experienced it that's another box that's ticked and then you can move on to the next stage yeah yeah uh, just a quick word on the weekend's action uh, Pacquiao Bromina did you catch any of it? I did what did you make of it? well if you want me to be honest I saw the first eight rounds of my recording cut out um, so I was a bit gutted about that um, but for the eight I rounds that I saw <laughs> I, I thought I thought it was Pacquiao all the way um, again disappointing but Broner's old, old style, bad style, and no substance, you know, and, and that's how he is, and that's how he's always going to be. Um, nothing's going to change, because he just talks crap, I mean, he did as soon, soon as soon as the fight was done, I, I saw what he was saying, and he's just deluded. He said I was deluded, but he's more deluded than anybody. I mean, what, what's your opinion on, sort of, the attention that he's managed to draw, you know, oh, to himself on the back of this? But, but, but he's, he's, that's about personalities and characters, you either... You either like somebody, if, if somebody's a big personality, if somebody has a personality, right, you either like them or you don't like them. And with Broner, he attracts the, I can't stand you, a lot more than he attracts the people that like him. It's the same way anyway, same with Fowler, same with myself, you know? There's a lot of people out there that don't like us, but then there are people that like us as well. And, and in, in a sport where, where if your profile's higher, you've got more opportunities, that's, that, it doesn't matter as long as you can handle that. Yeah, yeah. If, it, if it if it affects you where somebody doesn't like you, and it affects you, then it's no good being like that. You know, you need to be a quiet little mouse. It doesn't speak to anybody. It just goes and does his job, does his job, and that's fine. But if it's if, if you want to get things out of this sport, then I suppose you've got to you've got to divide opinion really. I suppose. Yeah, and just a, a way on on Pat. Yo, it's almost you know a shame. It's almost like the attention's gone off. I mean, he's 40 years of age. Um, it's quite remarkable, really, isn't it? You know, it is great. Listen, if it was, um, if it was a, a 25-year-old prospect that went in and beat up Broner, everybody would be like, "Oh wow, that's brilliant!" You know, yes, he's slower than what he used to be. He's not got the same intensity as what he used to have. He's not as good. He's not as sharp, but he's still very good, and he put in a great performance. And, and, you know, be, be a good fighter, and Nick Broner is a good fighter. For all these faults in his personality, uh, he is a good fighter. Would you entertain Mayweather, Pacquiao? No. I went, I went to, to, to Vegas for the first one, and it was shy. Um, so I won't, I won't go back for this one. Um, and especially now, I mean, I looked at, he looks, I think it's sad. I, I actually think it's sad. Um, it's like Mayweather's fight against Conor McGregor. He didn't. He did what he wanted to, but he didn't look like Mayweather. Um, 
you can see that age is catching up on him. Age is catching up on Pacquiao. Who cares? Who cares? It's like um, if they're like a, a soccer sixes masters tour or something like that. That's what you. That's what you'd be watching. But well, people, do, you know people I mean? do. Oh, people so watch it. Of course they will. Yeah, yeah. But, but my, for me. No, because I remember Pacquiao and Mayweather when they were at the best. I loved them and I loved what they were doing. Now they're not at the best. Now they're just a shadow. They're, you know, they're, they're a percentage of, of what they were. Whoever wins now doesn't mean that they was a better man back then. It didn't happen back then. So who cares if it happens now or not? It's just, it's just crap. Yeah, they're, they're talking about Khabib fighting. Fight, well, Khabib wants to fight Mayweather. I mean. Is that a, is that a fight that would, would, would intrigue you? I mean, I, I personally... In what? Uh, in what? In, 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 in the octagon? I'm not a chance well, like, there. you go. I don't... That, I, would that interest you? If, if Mayweather said, right, I'll fight Khabib, I'll fight McGregor, I'll go in octagon, your rules. I'd be like, I want to watch this. So what if they get into a boxing ring? Who cares? No, it, they're, not, they're not boxers. They're MMA fighters. They kill you in the octagon. But if you put in a boxing ring, if you beat him, so what? You're supposed to beat him. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's like McGregor getting getting schooled by Mayweather in a boxing ring. Does that make him any any less of a man? In, uh, no, it doesn't. I'm not an MMA man. I don't watch MMA, but I, 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 I know they, them guys are, and I know what they've achieved, and I know how good they are in Oxford. And I rate them. Do I rate McGregor any less for losing to Mayweather in a boxing ring? Do I? And so it makes no difference to me. If Mayweather went in the ring into Oxford with them, that's a fair place because you've got big balls because I wouldn't do that. Mm. Yeah. You know? I don't think it's going to happen though, no, is it? Is it? Yeah, yeah, is no. it? Not a chance. And just to finish More off... chance of me being your right eye back in this interview. <laughs> and just to finish off, um, you know, Anthony Joshua, obviously, there's still a little bit of doubt in terms of you know, who he's fighting. What, yeah. would you face, what would you make of the whole thing at the minute with Wilder, White, Fiori? Who, who, who do you, what do you want to see um, in, in April? You know what? It's a bit, a bit difficult one because I would like to see Fury get his rematch against Wilder because I believe he won the fight. So, in an ideal world for me, Fury fights Wilder, wins the WBC title, then Fury is the WBC champion. He's British. AJ's got all the, all the other belts. He's British. You've got a unification between two British fighters for the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. Wow. For me, that's only my opinion, people don't agree with it. But for me, that's immense, that's huge. In my lifetime, that'd be absolutely huge. So that's how I'd want to see it. Um, just people to have that little bit of patience just to wait for that fight. Um, failing that, I don't know, man. I think if, if, if AJ's not fighting Wilder or, or Fury for April 30th, Dylan White. It's got to be on Because it? Dylan White's done everything that's been asked of him and he's been exciting while he's been doing it. It's not like he's been stinking joint out. You know, he's been exciting, taking on real fights and sitting there waiting. So I would rather that fight happen um, April 13th. Um, Miller, for me, I like him. I like him as a character. I think he's a. If he can take a shot, he's a problem because at 300 pounds, rumbling forward if you can take a shot the work rate that he's got he's a problem for anybody but he's not beating anybody yet um, so you can't justify him to take a, get a shot in front of Dylan White you can't it, it feels the value there with Miller is for that fight to happen in anyway, America anyway. yeah, yeah I, I, I get the profile that. I get that, that. that seems to be where the value yeah. is yeah, I get Miller over here I think really interesting. I'm not sure. I don't think I, generally I, people know who Miller is. I, I, get, I, I get that totally. I, that, that is an American fight. But um, I, the problem is, is everybody's got to do what's best for them. So AJ's got to do what's best for him. If he can't get why, uh, if he can't get Fury and Wilder, I would like to see him to fight Dylan. But if what's best for him. To, for looking forward for the winner of Fury and Wilder in case Wilder wins it if what's best for him is to go to America and fight then he's going to do that or Eddie's going to tell him to go and do that that's what's going to happen but what's best for him isn't best for Dylan White and Dylan White's been hanging around beating all these guys and he deserves his, his shot at the title you know he's not going to get his shot against Wilder because Fury will probably get that unless 
there's a curveball and Fury ends up fighting AJ, then Wilder can defend against Dylan. As long as Dylan gets his crack at his world title fight, that's, that's how I see it. it, it, it but, but boxing sometimes it's not quite fair. And boxing sometimes you have to have that little bit extra bit more patience and you have to wait and then everything happens. Listen, Dave Powell, thanks for talking to Fight Up TV. It's always a pleasure. Good man. Cheers. Cheers.